Hey guys, how's it going? We're working on the old uh, 70 ski horse today. Back out it in the garage, back at it. Trying to warm her up out here a little bit. I only want to work out of here a few hours, so hopefully we can get Spark back and uh, get this thing to pop, you know, fire up a little bit before we take the dash and the fuel tank off for paint, for repaint, I should say. But, uh, well, let's get started here. Okay, so, ouch. Wow. Okay, so where we last, last left off was we needed a new condenser. So, I had my buddy George from Northwestern Boat make me two new ones. Out of um, you can't get the original parts anymore for condensers, not that you'd want to anyways. So what he does is he gives you a little retrofit kit. And each each condenser is of course tested. And then he uh, they just put on a little extra wire there. Give you some new hardware for allowing them to fit in the original hole. Because the original condensers were real tall. Oh, I don't remember how this thing eeks in there. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh. fish this baby through. I'm sitting on a milk crate here. That's falling over. Oh, Woodruff key. Just a minute. I gotta reset. Okay. Sorry about that. I don't know if I mentioned before, I'll throw a picture in. This snowmobile was actually printed, you know, a picture of it was printed in the uh, Michigan Snowmobiler magazine for January, which was pretty dang cool. So it's definitely a head turner, you know, people notice it. That's kind of the cool things why, you know, original colored sleds are stunning. You know, they're amazing. People that restore them to original condition. But our stuff is, it's nice, you know, but we also can't take care of it. You know, I can't take care of our stuff the way it should be taken care of. You know, like on an enclosed trailer, they call them trailer queens. That's what, what I wish our restored sleds could uh, live on. But they just can't. So, while it's nice to have factory correct originality, it's not practical for us. So, if you can paint them close, so they're still green, granted this is Articat green. This milk crate is going to break and I'm going to fall right on the ground. Yeah. Um, so while they're close, they're not perfect, but they still look nice. That's where I was going with that whole thing before I almost fell again. So, get the points hooked in here. And then we got our new uh, condenser. Sorry, you're probably not seeing much with my hands. Okay.
All right, points are back in. I don't like the way these guys are. But... They're seated firmly, don't get me wrong. But... All right, now oh, where's the flywheel? Flywheel's over there. No! Well, here's the cam, which is in good shape. I've ruined these stupid things before. Woodruff key back in. There we go. AKA flywheel key. Um, I'm gonna grab the flywheel, which is on the other side of the room, naturally. Okay, we got our spark back finally, and I have the new ignition switch installed. So, the next thing I want to do is try to see if we can't figure out why it won't go into neutral. Um, because whenever you fire this thing up, it immediately starts to go, you know, so it's kind of dangerous. So we're going to try to fix that, and then I got a new, uh, brake cable here. We'll try putting her in and seeing if that makes any difference. Hopefully it does. So, let's get over there and, uh, keep going. Okay, I think I got the compression release hooked up. Basically... Tighten that cable there and hook that bracket up there. So now it'll go, it goes out, well, in and out, in and out, etc. Uh, I need a spring over here to fix the brake, so I'm hoping that the compression release will do its job today. Otherwise, this thing's going to go driving into the back end of the sled, sled that's in front of it because uh, we're ready to fire her up. So let me get to the other side here and pick up some of my mess and uh, fire it up. As long as it's going to run, and then I'll take apart the dash and this fuel tank for a repaint. So, onward and upward. Alright, let's see if she's going to go. if we had some raw fuel to burn.
don't like to work in the cold. Look at me. My primer took a crap. Of course it did.
I'm seeing it getting pushed over here. Plus, it's nasty old fuel. Alright, well, let's keep going. Okay, well we know that it'll pop so it'll most likely run. I've got the tank off and the dash and the carburetor. So we are going to uh, rebuild the carburetor. That'll be easy. Paint the dash and the tank and get some new fuel in that tank. And also, since I'm here, I'm going to redo the fuel lines, but not today. So, we'll catch you on the next one. Okay, got this carburetor here. Let me get a couple things here that we're going to need. Busted our new tool kit. Oh. I hope you guys don't mind the noise. I got to do some laundry. I had to do laundry. Yeah, I apologize. We'll start with hopefully all are still in the frame. We'll start with this guy. Half one quarter. Okay, yeah, that's right where it should be. One and a quarter turns. First of all, that fuel smells positively ghastly. And second of all, we do have some scoring on that needle. Now, I don't recall cleaning this carburetor out. I must have done it. And that was the, the idle mixture, the low speed, excuse me, the low speed needle. Let's see where this one went. Half, one, quarter. Alright, right where it should be. So that's good. I think this thing just has some nasty old fuel in it. That looks great. Whew, yeah, I can smell it alright. Now 
this part's important to check. There's a screen back here and up here, and occasionally those do clog up. I may have gone through this carburetor once. That looks okay. There's actually, actually the screen is bad, but it's okay. From what I was noticing, a lot of fuel was coming back out. It was getting fuel inside the carburetor. That screen is nice and wide open. Uh, but it just wouldn't stay running. But yeah, you look at this, you can see some of the nasty old fuel. Oh boy, lots of nasty old fuel coming out. If you could only smell that right now. I think it just sucked up a lot of crud, some belt dust. Because I don't exactly have the world's greatest air filter on it. So let's take the bottom off. Pray that we don't need a new you know, gasket, diaphragm, I shouldn't. The thing is I've never had to choke that machine before in its life to get it to run. And uh, it was running a tiny bit on the choke, so I think that was our... It just, the fuel that was in it was so rancid, it just wouldn't stay running. It just wouldn't, it wouldn't even burnable. Good we're doing this. It doesn't hurt anything. Big snowmobile show next weekend there in Noggin Way. I'm for sure taking the Reveler. Well, I haven't started it, but I, I suspect it'll fire right up. Close up there. Whoo, buddy. Hmm. Yeah, that would, uh, Cause her to run like crap, hey? Where did that even come from? What is that? It's belt dust. Betcha. Wow. <clears throat> yeah, that, uh, whew. That would certainly do it, hey? Not to mention there's water in there too. Alright, I gotta get some smaller tools. Be careful not to lose that spring. I've done that before. It really puts makes your evening crappy. Needle seems to be okay. I was only going to spray it with carburetor cleaner. We'll see how it cleans up. Hopefully, it uh, will clean up. <laughs> so, meanwhile, then I got to come up with a better filter. Like, holy crap. I don't even know where I could find another one. Oi. Well, we'll figure it out. But let's uh, do what we can to clean this one out. That cleaned itself up pretty darn well, so we don't have to soak it or anything. Let's get her back together.
order. Okay, one carburetor all finished up. A lot cleaner inside than it was. Should run like a top. On to the next one. Okay, here we have this dash from that 1970 ski horse. And uh, my dad was quite adamant that aluminum does not need to be primed. And he decided to just paint it. Well, we can see where that got us. So, here we are again, attempting to paint this monster. This time I got some other tools, but we got to finish getting the hardware off first. So, no place like the present. You know, let's start with this latch. I don't remember exactly what size everything is. Time for some sanding. A little 400 grit or, or to do it. It could take too much. Uh -oh. I thought this was memory paper. Okay, well, it's as clean as it's going to be. Without or any kind of a, a sandblaster. So I got a couple things here. I've got a Rust-Oleum brand. There we go. I started it. All you all got to do is hold. Okay. And the snowmobile when it's running and driving. This is a nice picture.
Something ain't right.